So today I'm going to talk to you about the Unit 5 Writing Assignment Analysis Through Definition. Um, this is an interesting paper and I think you'll have some fun with it. Um, I think you'll also learn a lot about yourself through it and I hope that it will help you to kind of put an end cap on this particular course. Um, the Writing Assignment is Analysis Through Definition and so you're going to write a multi-paragraph essay um, we've been doing that since Unit 3, so that's not scary. Um, defining your personal criteria for happiness. What does it mean, or what do you need to be happy? And once you've got your criteria down, um, you're also going to apply your own life to that and see if you meet or you match that criteria and how well you match that criteria. Maybe part of your idea of happiness is that you have a good job and your job right now is okay, but you're looking forward to a time when you can use your degree to have a better job. That's great. You're getting there, okay? So you're not quite in the happy range maybe, um, but you're getting there, you're working towards it and that's a positive thing. Um, once you're Sorry. Um, there is an article for you to read. It is a textbook chapter. Um, it's a sociology textbook chapter. And it is about how we decide, we decide which people are more happy than others. Um, I know the Scandinavian countries tend to have a higher happiness quotient um, than most other countries. And that's because they do things that we, a lot of us Westerners don't. Um, they are considered Westerners as well, but the idea of social connection, um, community mindedness, um, things that Americans aren't as good at as a whole. Um, some folks are really good at those. Um, but when we think about Americans and when the rest of the world thinks about Americans, um, we're very individualistic. Um, as a, as a nation, we believe that um, everybody is responsible individually um, and that's true on a lot of accounts but as we found out recently with our coronavirus stuff um, it, it really does matter what your neighbors do it really does matter what your governor's response to this is or the president's response to this is your response to this is um, and how much you see yourself part of a community um, really does impact the way you live your life right now. Um, and for a lot of people, it has really brought home the fact that we don't, as a, as a nation, we don't take care of people very well. Um, and it's not very surprising to those of us who've paid attention um, to the kind of monologue that um, we hear in the media, we hear from our politicians, um, and from a lot of other folks who believe that they are where they are in life because of their own um, their own ideas, their own personal merit, um, and that nobody helped them. Um, I personally believe that's a little crock. Um, everybody has people who have helped them. Um, first and foremost, you know, our parents. Um, even if they weren't fabulous, um, we're still here, right? Um, there's a lot of things that go on in our lives that can impact how happy, how successful, how much however you want to define that goes. And part of your job in this is to define happiness. So you have to think about what things make you happy, what ideas make you happy, what points of living make you happy, um, what do you have to have, be, do, understand to be truly happy. Um, and you can take this a lot of different ways. Um, of course you can be very materialistic about it, you can be very spiritual about it, um, you can be um, very intellectual about it. Um, you can mix those things together. Um, but it needs to be a set of criteria, and then you need to talk about how you match, how well you match those criteria in your own life and come up with a kind of a happiness quotient, right? Um, if I'm completely happy in four areas and getting happy in two areas but not happy at all in 17 areas, how happy am I? Um, so that's that's kind of how that works. Um, make sure that you choose criteria um, and do one criteria criterion per
per paragraph. Um, so you may not want to have 40 things that make people happy. Um, maybe you want your list, but then you want to only talk about five. Um, or maybe you only want to talk about three. Um, it's up to you. Like I said before, um, for the other papers, I don't put uh, an end limit on this. Um, so if you want to write 10 paragraphs, write 10 paragraphs. Um, if you you're, you do have a low end, um, you have to have at least four paragraphs, actually at least five paragraphs, sorry, got distracted. Um, at least five paragraphs in this, you need an introduction, you need a conclusion that, okay, the introduction sets up your criteria, the conclusion gives your final word on that criteria, and then at least three paragraphs in the middle that tell, here's this criteria and here's how I fit or don't, okay? Make sure each paragraph is very clear about which criterion you're looking at. Um, keep your comments specific to that criterion. Um, if you get distracted in your writing, copy and paste or cut and paste from one paragraph to another so that you make sure that everything that works for that particular criterion is in that paragraph and nowhere else. And nothing else is in that paragraph than stuff about that criterion. Okay, it should be fairly easy this time. Um, you just make sure that you have support for each of your criterion, whether or not you have met, met, met that particular piece of happiness, um, completely or not. Um, or if you're happy with how far along that criteria you are, that's great. Um, if you have some things you realize you want to work on, by all means, put it in the paper. Um, make sure that, again, you're following the rubric, uh, which I'm going to get to here in just a second, and that you do your best work, turn in your best work. Pay attention to the directions. Make sure that you're giving the right pieces in the right section, on, especially that first draft. Um, from there on out, things get put into paragraphs, um, but that first draft can be rather distracting. So make sure you're cutting and pasting things where you need to. Remember, control X to pull something out, control C to put it down. And you can only do one thing at a time. Um, for your particular paper, um, remember you're looking at a purpose. This is a definition, definitional analysis, okay? So you have to have your definition. You have to have the criteria that goes into being happy um, in that first paragraph. And then you have to walk through it as you go through the rest of the paragraphs. Your thesis statement, um, I believe happiness is X, Y, and Z, because X, Y, and Z, okay? And then make sure your supporting ideas and paragraphs follow that. Um, if you decide, if you get, if you're writing along and you're like, oh no, this is the perfect thing, make sure that that paragraph gets put into the introduction, okay? Um, make sure things match up. That's what editing's for. Um, paragraph development, okay, the strength of the organization of your paper. You need to make sure you understand what goes first, second, and third. Why is this first criteria most important? Why does it go first? Why does the next one go second? Um, make sure that's obvious in your writing, not just by saying first, second, and third, um, but by some sort of clear logic, okay? This one's most important because I have the most criteria matching for it. This one's next because it has the second most, okay? Something like that. Or just that this is the most crucial aspect of being happy, okay? Something like that. Um, the other part of this, of course, is your grammar and punctuation. Again, make corrections, walk through, look at your sentences piece by piece. Um, there are a couple of things that I do um, still as a writer, and I've been doing this a long, long time. Um, one of the things is, and I tell you to do this all the time, read it out loud. Um, when we're reading on a screen, especially our own stuff, um, we tend to hear in our head what we want to hear, what we believe is there, what should be there. Um, and when you read it out loud, a lot of times um, you'll find the places where um, you've started one sentence and ended with another. Um, and so you need to fill in the blanks there in the middle. Um, or where you've done something, um, I do this a lot um, when I'm first writing things out. Um, I'll have an idea and I'm writing and then I never finish. 
trail off into the end. Um, make sure you finish your ideas. Make sure you finish your thoughts so we can follow you. Um, the other thing, um, and this is for longer pieces, um, you might find it useful, um, although it is rather tedious, um, for something like this. I start with the very last sentence and read it by itself. Um, it forces my brain to make that sentence stand on its own. And a lot of times, even when we've read it out loud or whatever, it flows because it's ours. Um, and if we can read it in a different way, um, another thing that works really well is to put it away overnight, um, which means you have to be started a little early. Um, but put it away overnight, or at least put it away, go have lunch, whatever, come back. Um, give it a little bit of a rest um, so that you can look at it with almost new eyes. Um, if we're focused on something for hours at a time, um, it makes it really hard to find the mistakes um, because what we hear in our head is what is really supposed to be there and that may not be what's on the page. Now, for some of you, um, English is not your first language and so that makes things a little bit more difficult. Um, the Purdue Owl has some great tips and tricks for um, catching things that tend to fall through the cracks for ESL learners. Um, have a look at that, see what it can do to help you. Um, the other thing is um, for those of you who are, um, whose dialect is not very close to standard English, um, my growing up dialect is not very close to standard English, so I understand how this works. Um, you have to make sure that you know the pieces of your dialect that tend to um, mess up um, standard English. Um, that is word order, um, that is verb tenses, and that is we drop pronouns um, or we change pronouns. And this particular, those things are easy to find. Um, learn how to use the find and replace on your word processing program. Um, Microsoft Word has the best one, I think, um, but all everybody else has one. Um, go up to your search and say find and replace, and it will take you to that little program. And you can look at things um, that are specific to your particular issue. Um, if you know that you tend to have way too many commas, um, or a lot of your commas should be periods. You can go through and put comma in your find and then put an X in your replace. And you can go through and delete things without having to rework your whole paper. So make sure that you're focused on your ideas first, first and second drafts. Absolutely, that's a thing. If you need a third draft before we get to the final draft, that's fine too. We can walk through that. And we have been doing that this semester. Um, just because you need an extra step doesn't make you a bad writer. Um, sometimes it takes us a little bit longer to get into our heads or out of our heads. And it is fine to take an extra draft. It is fine to take extra time. Um, it is fine to go to tutoring. It is fine to go to the library. Um, even with our coronavirus mess, um, the library does have um, virtual tutoring, and so you can sign up for that and somebody can help you walk through. Um, sometimes just having a new set of eyes um, on your paper makes a huge difference in um, that polishing part. Um, but if you have questions, you know, um, email me, um, post a question on the discussion board, and I'll be happy to answer, be happy to help. Um, remember, this is a criteria match kind of paper, and so you're going to define what happiness is and how well you match it. Um, and so this will be an interesting paper for you to learn a lot about yourself and for me to learn a lot about y'all. So um, hang in there. We're almost done. Um, keep strong, and remember, you have to pull 80% um, on the final draft and on the assessment, and just keep plugging along until you do. Okay? So... Have a good day.